Hello, I'm Cordy Petabyte, Professor of Blockchain Technology here at ELF University. As a part of the university's Assessing and Evaluating Human Behavior for Naughty and Niceness curriculum, we're going to be talking today about blockchain technology and how it fits into the broader Naughty Nice List infrastructure. Here at the North Pole, we take the integrity of the data on the Naughty Nice List very seriously. We've been tracking the Naughty Nice List digitally since back in the 1930s. And when Santa developed blockchain technology back in the 1960s, we converted the Naughty Nice List over to using that technology. Like a lot of North Pole tech, blockchains have leaked to the general public. And now they're beginning to understand the benefits and usefulness of blockchains. In this case, leaked is probably a misnomer. We all remember that night back in 2008 when Santa ate a few too many cookies and, in the throes of a sugar rush, rattled off that white paper under a pseudonym and sent it out into the world, causing quite a stir. What is a blockchain? A blockchain is just a method of storing digital information. Blockchains provide data integrity by storing information in a way that ensures that if any portion of that data is altered or changed or removed, tampering will be obvious. While blockchains are used as part of a cryptocurrency uh, technology, because you know who in his white paper, they represent a completely separate technology. Individual data records are called blocks, and they're linked together, one after another. That's how we get the name blockchain. How does a blockchain provide data integrity? It's actually very simple. In addition to its own data, each block in the blockchain also stores a cryptographic hash of all of the data in the previous block. If any change is, made, change is made to any block in the blockchain, it'll be immediately obvious because the cryptographic hash stored in the following block will be wrong. And the cryptographic hashes in every block following the changed block will be wrong. This ensures that once we've added data to the blockchain, it can't be altered or removed without that change being evident. This is why we have chosen to store Naughty Nice List information in a blockchain. Keeping track of the naughty and niceness of 7.8 billion humans and magical beings is a difficult, difficult task. Every one of those beings is tracked 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year by our fleet of elves on the shelves, who report naughty and nice activity back to our data center here at the North Pole. We've calculated that on average, each tracked individual will perform some sort of action that will rise to the level where it needs to be recorded on the naughty nice list approximately 2.1 times per week. If you do the math, this works out to be over 27,000 new blocks per second because that would be an enormous load for a single system to try to handle we have actually broken up the blockchains into 1,000 different blockchains with each individual uh, assigned to one of those different blockchains. In addition to protecting the integrity of the data using blockchain technology, we've also used a Santa, our Santa signature system. Uh, no block can be added to the official Naughty Nice blockchain unless the data has been signed with a digital signature from our high-speed Santa signature system. The S3 is our most secure system here at the North Pole. You cannot access that system individually. It requires three separate people to access the system, each one providing both a password and a hardware token. The S3 system will digitally sign a hash of the data portion, including the previous hash, of every block that is assigned and added to one of the official chains. How are you supposed to document an incident? Well, each block represents an individual incident that rises to the level of altering someone's naughty nice score. 
field operatives are expected to provide some sort of documentation of the incident, and that's usually in the form of a report, a photo, or other background information. Blockchain blocks are designed so that you can add up to nine separate documents uh, of various formats, and those will be attached to each block. We allow a wide range of formats, as you can see here on the screen. Relative documentation uh, that doesn't match a supported format can be added just simply as a binary blob. Just so that you know, most of our operatives work with simple PDF documents, attaching each one to a single block in the blockchain. Well, what does a naughty nice block look like? Well, the naughty nice block contains two different kinds of information, as shown on the screen here. The red information is user input. This is information that you will be adding once you've graduated from Elf University's curriculum. The blue information is added by the blockchain code. Each block consists of an index, which is the number of the block on the blockchain, a nonce, which is a 64-bit value randomly generated by our blockchain code and added to the block. Uh, and we'll explain the reason for this in the coming slides. The information that you will be adding are the ID number of the naughty nice individual, your personal odd, uh, ID number as the reporting party, you'll tell us how many documents you'll be adding to the block, you'll tell us the score of the naughty nice points assessed, whether it was a naughty action, a nice action, uh, and then you'll provide the documents. The blockchain code will add the date and time. It will add the hash of the previous block, and it will then send it off to the S3 system to be digitally signed. Once it's returned, the full block hash will be taken, and that will be used as the previous hash in the following block. How do we validate that the, the blockchain has not been altered? It's actually very simple. To ensure the data on the blockchain has not been altered, we begin at the first block, known as the Genesis block. It is assumed to be valid just simply by being defined as the Genesis block. From there, we begin by checking the hashes of the block and the digital signatures of the block, and we check to make sure that the hash matches the previous block hash of the following block. If, at any time, any of those are incorrect, all of the following blocks will be incorrect as well, and we know that we've found an invalid block on the blockchain. We are in the midst of a two-year modernization project for our blo blockchain technology here at the North Pole. We've been using blockchain since the technology was developed by Santa back in the mid-60s, and quite honestly, our code base is getting a little old. Most of it has been written in COBOL up until this year. We're currently in year one of a two-year program to overhaul our technology. Based on the suggestions of our IT consulting firm, JF Consulting, we've moved our code base to Python. You may have noticed that we talk a lot about cryptographic hashes, and well, uh, unfortunately, due to some unforeseen delays, we were unable to deploy our new Python code until after the beginning of 2020, when we already had blocks in the blockchain. Our previous blockchain code used MD5 hashes, and we know that MD5 hashes have some potential issues. Luckily, uh, several years ago, we began adding a 64-bit random nonce to each of the blockchain blocks. That was what I described as the nonce when we looked at the contents of a blockchain block. Those 64-bit nonces are added to the beginning of the block in order to um, keep us from having any issues surrounding MD5. We're ready to deploy, to deploy patching uh, to switch over to SHA-256 hashes once we begin our rollout of 2021's blockchain. Thank you very much for attending today's lecture on blockchain technology. Should you have any questions, I have office hours available.
¡Ho, ho, ho, ho!